I'm Jesko von Oehnhausen, Global Director of the Product Division Photo, so I'm leading the photo business at uh, Leica. And I'm here together with Nico Köhler, who is our Head of Product Experience, and he worked very hard on um, bringing uh, content credentials into our cameras. And before Nico is showing you details on our implementation, I would like to give you a short introduction on our thoughts and how we convinced our board members to go into content credentials to make it a relevant feature for our cameras. Because as Dana, uh, I think he, he mentioned that, that it's not self-explaining that we all work on that. It's not a seller for cameras, but it's a very important um, feature to raise the relevance of photography and to maintain the doc documentary value. So as many of you might know, we proudly introduced in October the M11P with built-in content credentials, meaning we have a camera that is able to sign content right at the moment of the capture. Uh, with this, we implemented a standard uh, that we are intending to, to keep uh, long-term and um, yeah, to implement as a standard for photography. And we look back on a very long history of implementing standards in our cameras. Looking back even 100 years ago, in 1925, we implemented, for example, uh, 135 millimeter film as a standard for mobile photography. And also over the last 100 years, we have implemented some lens standards, like the screw mount and the M mount and the L mount uh, autofocus lens standard. But it's also not the first time that we implemented something that Adobe has invented. And we are very happy that we have uh, taken very early the decision to also go for the DNG standard in the Leica M8 and before in the Leica digital module. Uh, we are very happy that uh, we were able to, to put this into a camera and we get very good reputations from our customers that this was the right decision. Um, so we were very keen and very optimistic that um, going for a standard that Adobe is creating would be the right way to go for. Because um, content credentials and content authenticity is closely related to our heritage in the reportage photography. Uh, Leica cameras always have been a very first choice for reportage photographers because it always was a very mobile and professional and robust solution to go into the field to take pictures. And that's why many iconic pictures have been taken with a Leica in the reportage photography history. Many of them are very famous and iconic and are brought into connection to Leica cameras. And for some of them, authenticity uh, the or the provenance and the authenticity of the content of a picture have been a public um, discussion, even in analog times. For example, if we look at the first one, uh, The Falling Soldier from Robert Kappa, uh, that was taken in 1936 in the Spanish Civil War, there has been a long going uh, over decades and uh, public discussion about the provenance of that picture. Many people um, doubted that the picture was taken at the place where Robert Kappa said it was taken at. Um, there were analyzers on the background, if this can really be there. So I think until now it's not really clear if, uh, if it is authentic or not, or if it maybe is even staged. And when we envision having content credentials in a camera, uh, how we envision it for the future, maybe even to sign location based on GPS data and uh, time and date. This kind of discussion would not have happened anymore and a photographer could rely on, uh, on being trusted. Another example that is quite, quite famous where image manipulation was a topic is this picture that is symbolizing the end of Second World War. It's called the Red Flag of a Reichstag by Yevgeny Kaldei. And this was also published in a manipulated way. So there's a soldier on it uh, who was wearing two watches uh, that could lead to the assumption that uh, there have been illusions going on before. And before it was published, uh, this watch was retouched. So I'm showing this because it's a good example that uh, image manipulation has even been a topic in analog photography, which is said to be really authentic and hard to, to manipulate. But going uh, further with content credentials, we are even one step ahead 
uh, beyond analog photography. So for this reason, we were quite sure that going for quantum credentials will raise the value of Leica's heritage of um, reportage photography. And I brought one more example, which is not about changing the content and the trust in the content of the picture, but this also some kind of famous uh, example of image manipulation caused a public discussion about the boundaries of manipulation, even if it's just uh, for the purpose of fitting uh, the motif into the vertical format of uh, the National Geographic magazine. Uh, it was not done uh, with, the, with the knowledge of the photographer, so um, starting with this discussion, uh, uh, it, was, it became clear that uh, photographers really want to rely on um, how their pictures are being used and that they want to show how the picture is taken at, as it is shot. And I want to close uh, my introduction on the content credentials with some examples of, of, our, of a, a current marketing campaign that we have that, that also shows that we have a close relationship to witnessing the world, because uh, cameras should be witnesses of the happenings in the world, of the fears in the world, and they should be witnesses of the roommates of the world, and maybe of the little sins of the world. <laughs> and with this, I would like to hand over to Nico, who will show you how we did actually implement content credentials into the M11P. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Jesko, for the kind introduction. And I will now show you how content credentials came actually into the Leica M11P. So we are really happy that we announced the M11P on the 26th uh, of October this year, which is uh, the world's first camera with content credentials built in. I have one here, and we are actually have them on the market. So today, you can take photos with content credentials built in. But it's really important for us that uh, content credentials is a three-piece thing. So we have on the one hand, we have the C2PA standard, and Jesko just shown that standards are really important in order to bring a bigger thing to life. Content credentials is really important going forward to see what is behind the photo, what is behind the content we are seeing, how it's being created from uh, the capture to the edit, to sharing it uh, with everyone. Second, the initiative is really important because just the standard is actually nothing. It's really important bringing it uh, to consumers, bringing it to everyone, that people can see how things are being created. And the third piece is, of course, our implementation, and we will see lots of different solutions. It's really important that everyone plays with it from capture to edit, to share, and I'm really happy that everyone is here trying to bring this forward. As Dana said, this is, a, this is a journey, and we are at the beginning, and I really hope that 2024 will be the year where we really have broad adoption on this. And broad adoption, as we are a camera company, is really important that we adopt the standard from capture so that photos and all other content like videos and audio is actually signed when it's being created. And second, edit is really important that there's, of course, Photoshop and Lightroom. So when our images go there, uh, you, you can uh, add things, but you can always go back what is the original image and you can uh, capture all the things that you have been changed on that image. But it's not only about Adobe, we should also push forward all the other editing platforms to actually adopt content credentials so that we have a, one solution for the future. And the last piece is the share. So from 
uh, news organizations to social platforms. I'm really hoping that in 2024, we are moving adoption of content credentials forward. So we have done our piece in Capture, and I hope you all help us bring it to added and also to sharing. So that one day on every social platform, you can take a video or a photo and inspect it, how it's been created, when it's been created, and how it's been manipulated over time. But let me show you a little bit more about how content credentials actually came to Leica camera. So the content credentials have been created, uh, the, the Content Authenticity Initiative has been started in 2019. Uh, really funny, only two days later, we had Leica put two posters on the wall. One was called Authenticity and one was called CAI. It was only two days later, so that was really important, as Jesko said. Authenticity, trust, and provenance is really important for us, based on the history. Um, and then, uh, as we have seen, the C2PA standard, really important, came about a year uh, and a bit later. And then, actually, additional year later, Adobe approached us, why should we not bring content credentials directly into a camera? And that was kind of like the start of the discussion. But the discussion lasted about like three months, how can we bring it? And actually, those folks from the uh, CAI team actually challenged us and said like, can we not make it in half a year to announce a first prototype on the Adobe Max conference? And actually we accepted the challenge. It took additional three months and our engineering team did amazing work so that the Adobe Max conference in 2022, we announced the first M11 prototype with content credentials based in. Back the days when it was a software only solution and taking one JPEG and signing it took about 10 seconds. So this is when we started, like, we definitely, when we bring it to camera, we have to make it secure and actually perform and that people can actually use it. And that uh, took additional one year until we launched the M11P. And then uh, also something important happened at the last Adobe Max conference. The, the content credentials, the name was born and also the face with the icon. I think this is really important, to have one name for, for it, content credentials, and the sign that you can trust content. So for us, really important that we have the content credentials name and the signature. But let me tell you a little bit more on how the M11P actually works. So our solution. We're actually really happy that the M11P P partly stands for press, is the right product for content credentials. We started to actually, based on the M11, create a new camera. And in that one year to bring it to production, we actually actively decided to include a hardware chipset in order to have a secure solution. So when you build content credentials, trust, authenticity, and provenance is key. And it's really important that you trust the solutions. And we believe with a secure chipset is a more trusted solution. And then the next part, uh, the next part is actually every camera in our production gets a certificate from, from a certificate authority, which is actually a German uh, printing, uh, uh, federal printing agency. And we store the private key in the secure chipset so that we have a complete uh, solution that when you take a photo, every photo is signed. So there's a secure chipset, there's a certificate, there's a private key stored in the chipset, and when we take a photo, it's actually signed by a C2PA conformant algorithm. And what you end up with, you end up with an image hard-binded with the content credentials. And in camera, it looks like this. So you have a menu that's called content credentials. You can turn it on. You can add copyright information as well as the author. And when you do this and take a photo with content credentials, both working on JPEG and actually RAW, which is DNG for us, uh, a photo is captured with a content credentials and you see it on camera. But the camera is only one piece because you're take the photo out and you want to see how it's actually been captured. And that you can do today on contentcredentials.org and let me show you. 
So this is the example of a photo of a colleague of mine, Nick Rains, is captured on an M11P. You see all the EXIF information, and you see that this uh, originally signed by our cameras, and then you see the photo has been manip manipulated. You see by whom. You see it's done in Adobe Photoshop. You see all the actions that has been taken to change that photo. And really great, as Dana has shown already, so on content credentials, you see the whole history. How has the photo been traveled from the origin to the final image? And you can compare on the right the original and on the left the edit in, uh, in black and white. And if you want to try it and see how that works, there's actually a QR code, so if you're interested, uh, take a photo and you can inspect the file from the original image to the final output. And it's also like, for adoption, it's really important that we try to bring content credentials not only to capture, but also for sharing. We also implement in our companion app, the Leica Photos app, uh, the content credentials based on the Rust SDK. So when you transfer your photo, you can actually inspect in our app that the content credentials are inside. It's really important to educate people that they are attached to an image. Uh, this is why we integrate also in our companion app. But is, a product or a solution is nothing with people actually using it in a field. So let me show, show you how actually uh, our customers and ambassadors uh, are using that solution today. One of my favorite quotes in photography is, is by Henri Cartier-Bresson. He said that to take a great photograph, the photographer has to put their head, their eyes, and their heart in the same alignment. things about the human experience of being a photographer is that we're not like machines. We, we really have to use our empathy, our, our, um, you know, our minds and our hearts um, to interpret the scene and try to make sense out of it. What I really enjoy is immersing myself into the scene as much as possible, but then just watching things unfold. And that's the part of photography that I, just the experience of taking pictures that I probably enjoy the most. You're looking at the people that you're photographing and you're trying to get a sense of what their experience is like. And um, that, that sort of requires you to, to be as, as human and, and as compassionate as possible. I'm always trying to bring more of myself now into that interpretation. This is an existential time in photography. The fact that our images are now, when they're disseminated digitally, they're kind of subject to being manipulated by other people. The technology that's built into the Leica M11P is a powerful tool, particularly for photographers like me who work in the documentary and in the photojournalistic space, to secure the provenance and the content credentials with this global standard of the Content Authenticity Initiative. And um, we're able to do this now for the first time the moment we take those pictures. Yeah, I couldn't uh, have said that actually better. And actually, thanks, David is actually here. Uh, amazing that we spread the world, uh, uh, the word uh, for content credentials. So going forward, it's really important that content credentials are coming to products from capture to edit to share. So let's all try to move forward to bring trust, authenticity, and provenance to all the content we are create in order that consumers can look behind and see what is true, what's not true. Thank you. <laughs>